So really the last couple of years, we've been finding some really interesting opportunities in the enterprise software space. Now, RPM is chief amongst them. It's the largest investment in the portfolio at the moment. Very nice, sticky revenue. It's, uh, it's been growing quite quickly, although initially that growth was hidden somewhat by accounting changes as the business was moving more towards a subscription model rather than an upfront perpetual license sale. And in this business, we've got a management team that's very well incentivized. Yes, yeah, Chev, um, because we never get tired of talking about software and quality. Another one we like in this category is Phineas. It is in the insurance space, but has very similar characteristics to RPM. Long-term contracts, sticky revenue, high incremental margins, and a management team which owns more than half of the company. In particular for Phineas, we expect next year, 2022, to be an important year as their customers recover from the pandemic and they have more money to spend on upgrading software systems. But maybe enough of the software chat, there are also plenty of reopening, more cyclical opportunities out there, especially now that everyone is talking about the virus. What do you think? Well, that's right. And chief amongst these in this particular fund is the travel exposure that we have. The largest of these is Tourism Holdings, an operator of recreational vehicles. Another is Experience Co that uh, operates skydiving and Great Barrier Reef trips. Now, of course, both of these businesses are uh, leveraged of an amount of inbound international tourism, and that has ground to pretty much zero. However, both of these businesses should actually come out of the pandemic in a better state and more profitable than when they went in. But what, what about the most recent lockdowns? How much do they affect these companies you're so excited about? Well, a couple of months of lost revenue is, of course, unhelpful, but it's not going to change the valuation picture here too dramatically for these businesses. Both of them, having been through the pandemic, now have some very flexible operations that they can tune up and down according to the number of people that they service. And they both have balance sheets that we believe will get them through to the reopening at the end of the tunnel here. Maybe Unibail is another one that fits in well in this category. It is the owner of the Westfield franchise in Europe and in the US. And obviously malls were severely hit by the pandemic, but Unibail has mostly premium assets in great locations. So we would expect a strong recovery as the pandemic subsides. Now this one, Gaston's had uh, some balance sheet question marks over the time. So wh where is that at the moment? Well, you're right. Uh, debt used to be a major concern, uh, and now it's becoming less of an issue as we're coming out of the pandemic and things are getting better, not worse. And second, don't forget these guys are selling assets at very good prices, and that delivers the balance sheet and is a credit to the equity. All right. Now let's talk some growing businesses here, Gaston, and chief amongst these AMA group, the panel beating business. Obviously, it didn't have much work during the pandemic because we had people staying at home, getting into fewer accidents, which meant fewer cars for them to fix. Immediately after that, you had a new management team that came into the business and immediately started facing some issues around the inflation of labor cost and the inflation of parts costs as well. Now, the business remains a pretty key player in this panel beating space. It provides a service to the insurers that they're hard pressed to get at the same price elsewhere. And after reopening, we think it trades at less than a 10 times PE multiple. Okay, so I get it that it's cheap. Is there more to your thesis here other than pure valuation? So two things, primarily when we actually do reopen, we're gonna be able to grow this business by acquisitions, folding more panel beating shops under the AMA umbrella and benefiting from the scale advantages that that creates. Uh, secondarily, we're going to also be in a position as this labor cost uh, uh, inflation subsides, where investors are rapidly looking forward to that future. Maybe moving on to the next category of uh, steady performers. In here, we like uh, things like Downer, especially now that it's a much simpler business after selling its capital intensive, highly volatile segments. The new downer is much more focused on steady, low capital businesses like maintaining roads and utility networks. 
very often for government clients, which are obviously much lower risk. And we don't think this more nuanced aspect of downer is properly priced in by the market. So you talk about pricing, Gaston, what are we actually paying for this new downer? Look, it, it is cheap and we think it is too cheap for what it is. To give you a sense, uh, it is currently trading on 13 times earnings versus the market on 22 times. So that is a decent upside uh, as they deliver on the new strategy. But perhaps that's enough on uh, new ideas for 2022. And I'll, I'll hand it over now to Steve. Thanks, guys. And special thanks to you, Alex, for really digging in over the past few years. We've got this uh, portfolio in the position that we want it to be in and back delivering the returns that we know it should be delivering over long periods of time.